Part 1. Party is at level 2 only just. Highest has spent 650 experience. Campaign had them investigating a small cult that was trying to summon a demon, wreck up part of Ambulon for corn, etc. Anyway, the party sicker, scum, arbitrator, adept, tech priest. Two guardsmen and an assassin had been investigating the rumors of the cult, and generally mucking about. Anyway, they mess up horribly on trying to find the cult, and don't even stumble upon them until after the summoning ritual has started, but come with some local administrators in tow. What follows is a massive bloodbath, resulting in 23 bloody as fuck deaths to being party members, the scum and the assassin. This was all during a summoning ritual to Korn, who is just so pleased with the impromptu slaughter that instead of sending in a some pussy lesser demon, he sends in a fucking charnel demon. So, it was at this point that in theory, the only way for the remaining acolytes to accomplish this mission was for at least some of them to escape long enough to make an extra minute's call and maybe make it back to a transport. The very first person who got to act after the charnel demon appeared was the adept. He decides to charge the demon, and hopefully buy a scant moment or two for the rest of the party to get a head start noble sacrifice and all. So, he charges it with his knife he had opted to trade in his staff for a knife earlier, just for flavor reasons. He successfully hits it impressive, when he has a weapon skill of 27 and proceeds to roll a 10. We were all impressed, and then he successfully confirmed righteous fury, so he got to roll again. 10. By this point we have started roaring, as we find this hilarious, and joke about how crazy it would be if he killed it, he kept rolling. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 9. A level 2 adept one shotted a charnel demon with an ordinary knife with room to spare. Oh yeah, he also had a strength of 24, so he was both weak and had no talent for swinging things, and yet still killed a super monster in one hit. The GM already gave him a full 1000 bonus XP no one objected. Fucker earned it but still has no idea what the Inquisition would have to say to a confirmed report from a batch of newbie acolytes at the book worm absolutely curb stomped a demon that can eat. Space Marines. Anyway, we have finished talking with the GM and the player of Grendel, and here is what has been decided he will get, in addition to the bonus XP and adulation of Ambulon, the custom talent contempt demons which allows him to flat out ignore the fear rating and demonic presence of demons. Additionally, Grendel's knife is now sanctified and mono, and can ray roll a missed attack once per round if the attack is made against a demon. It is now called Grendel's Claw. Grendel is now that which demons run in terror from. And he is still nothing more than a bookworm. Oh yeah, forgot this, but some funny things about Castus Grendel. He has not bought a single sound constitution, and rolled a 1 for starting wounds. He still has a wounds of 8 and a TB of 2 and no armor. He is from a forge world and rolled the domain background. I would say he proved his right to survive via superiority. He has not bought a single remotely combat related skill. He rolled his build off of Hive World, and rolled Stocky. He is a far TGUI. He has an agility of 28. He is essentially unfat, physically incapable fuck who still pulled this shit off. Anyway, the party interaction is as follows both the guardsmen are new players, one from Volg Hive, one from a feral world, and both have crazy toughness both have over 40 and thanks to this. Do not do much in the way of strategizing or being diplomatic. However, as new players they defer to the more verbally minded characters when it is time to decide what to do basically they are muscle, as they should be. The tech priest me has been serving as a sometime leader, trading out with the arbitrator periodically as he has better training at most verbal interaction. The tech priest is played as being quietly scornful of the beliefs of the other acolytes and role played as being a bit standoffish to the party, as ultimately, they have different beliefs. The arbitrator is from Gunmetal City and duels shotgun pistols even though she has no talents to make dual wield worthwhile yet and loves following right behind the charging guardsman to get off. Some point blank scatter shooting goodness. She had been flirting with the assassin who was a great shooter, but he blew up in a pile of gore, so that is done. The sicker is a vanilla sicker role played as being completely subservient to the whims of those he is told to follow, and flagellates himself when he manifests phenomena for being unclean. He has a rebuilt skull, which is awesome. And then there is Grendel. He up until the event was a strange sort, both largely ignored by the party for his lack of combat ability he frequently just ran from it before for obvious reasons but his expanse of knowledge tech use, common scholastic forbidden lore, you name it he has made a habit of laboriously transcribing notes both in and out of game on what happens. 
and is basically the guy the party defers to when it comes to clarifying what has been learned. The assassin was role played to be likely Ivy another fat guy and was all around awesome. He was going along with the flirting because it was pretty close to love can bloom and that the two met while trying to kill each other long story. He loved his long LAS and had pulled off a couple awesome headshots. His new char will be a cleric and mana dominant. So the interactions with the sicker should be awesome, as the sicker will probably agree and flagellate himself more. The scum wore one of those exploding collars and had previously been part of the cold courier guild or whatever it is called and had a fake lung player refuse to run or charge too. Which I thought was an awesome choice to reflect having one lung and was an asshole and reluctant to lie to the party. His new char will be an assassin with the morit at background, so he will be a slice and dice fucker. That covered them good? Part 2. Okay. So here's what happened last session in the wonderful world of Grendel. The group of acolytes had been dispatched to Solomon, as there were rumors that something might be afoot in the lower parts of the hive. Over the last several weeks, disappearances named as sacrifices to the beast of Solomon widely believed to be a myth by majority of the Inquisition thought up to give the people living and working there a sort of mental release, a reason that their lives are so terrible have risen dramatically, to the point that work is slowing drastically. Grendel and company get sent in to find out what's going on and get the lower hive back to normal, or order a massive purge on it. Whatever is necessary to prevent the taint from spreading to the upper hive, as their inquisitor owes some favors to nobles in the upper hive there. Who called in their markers to get this shit resolved? Oh, and for future reference, the other characters have the following names Volg Hive Guardsman Bruel Dacker, Feral World Guardsman Grak Hack, Imperial World Arbitrator Acadia Enos, Forge World Tech Priest Barbosa Cromwell, Imperial World Sicker Able Bones, Noble Born Cleric Previous, Assassin Alaric Nihilius, Dusk Feral World Moritat Assassin Previous, Scum Rothgarm. Anyway, on the travel to Solomon, we get accosted by pirates shortly after exiting the warp GM randomly rolls each time, they get past the batteries and dock with our transport, and send in a boarding party. And since they docked in the hallway outside our rooms we got bad rooms for the trip we are the first thing they run into. Thankfully, the blaring sirens and sounds of shouting invaders did wake us, and we had time enough to set up cover and make the hallway something of a death trap. And after killing 16 pirates who tried to rush us, the rest are bunkered down, and we have ourselves a stalemate. After a few rounds pass with only an occasional trail of pot shots, Grendel who had not hit a single pirate with his stub revolver has an idea. He confers with our new cleric Nihilius who had taken the firebrand redemptionist background for a bit, and then after fiddling a bit, walks out into the open he was made to take a fear test to walk down Bullet Avenue, but failed by less than a degree, so after spending a bit of time whimpering, he went. The pirates, seeing this, get ready to turn him into a pile of bullets, before a few of them pass an awareness check to notice Grendel had strapped 12 flamer fuel canisters to his chest and was holding a fire bomb in one hand and a molotov quick and dirty conversion of rot gut using a piece of cloth in the other with a lit eye stick in his mouth. The pirates who passed the check proceed to frantically prevent their less observant compatriots from opening fire. So Grendel walks until he is pretty much right in the faces of the pirates, and proceeds to try and threaten to blow himself up and kill all of them if they don't get off the ship. GM makes Grendel roll an intimidate check he is unskilled in intimidate. He rolled a 99. GM rules he stands there stuttering and gibbering for a moment, at which point Grendel spends a fate point to re-roll. He rolls a 1. The pirates flee for their lives, leaving behind their fallen comrades. Grendel, before the campaign even truly began, pulled a Gran Torino-esque crazy old man moment, and made pirates run away from one fat guy. So, thinking we are hot stuff after looting the fallen pirates, the captain and the other passengers crew members show up, and congratulate the acolytes. The Nihilius decides to try and charm the captain into upgrading their room and board, maybe even pay them for services rendered, in light of their actions. He rolls to charm, and rolls a 100. Nihilius insults the lesser beings that are all those not of the nobility, and turns the admiring masses into bitter and angry fucks, who proceed to think of us as racist, a sholic dicks. Way to go Nihilius. We are advised to stay in our piss poor rooms until we arrive at Solomon, and we do. Nihilius is convinced it is the sicker Abel's fault, and Abel morosely agrees, and flagellates himself in the corner, crying about what a repulsive mutant he is. The rest of the trip passes without incident, and we land on Solomon, and get down to investigating. 
we hit up the administratum, the local law enforcement, and briefly speak with some of the nobles who strong armed our inquisitor into doing this. Pretty much all we get is generic legends about the beast of Solomon, and how things sound like they got worse in the underhive, rather clearly we will have to investigate there. So we head down to the underhive, and start asking around, pretty much every time we mention our topic of interest, people get scared shitless and run the fuck away. Understandable, as Fluff presents the beast of Solomon as being a terrifying legend, so, we are getting nowhere, and decide to call it a day after meeting back up and heading to a seedy hotel in the underhive to spend the night. During the night, Abel is awakened by a group of robed and cowled individuals trying to bodily spirit him away from the hotel. In panic, he manifests Warp Howl, and manages to fuck that up with a psychic phenomena, and now everyone is floating up onto the ceiling. Predictably, this manages to wake up everyone, who proceed to Abel's room, to find Abel alone, who proceeds to start apologizing profusely for not catching any of his abductors. Nihilius calls him warp tainted scum not fit to breathe, Abel cries, and the tech priest Cromwell punches Nihilius in the gut and tells him to stop being a cunt to his teammate. There are more important things to do Cromwell really only punched him just for a chance to hit a cleric, what with the whole opposed face thing. Squabbling commences, and then everyone goes back to sleep with a watch order established. Morning comes, and the acolytes have a new topic of inquiry robed abductors. For a while they get nowhere again, but the arbitrator Enos actually finds someone who recognizes this. And after some cajoling he tells us that the cowled people took his sister around the time that the sacrifices to the beast started drastically rising. Interesting. Another day spent inquiring reveals many people have had family members just vanish, and some have also seen these robed strangers taking them away, all taking place during the rise in sacrifices. Quick backstory, the Beast of Solomon is an open-ended horror legend from Disciples of the Dark Gods, and underhivers sacrifice members of their own family and friends just so that it doesn't kill them. These abductions are markedly different. We even run into someone who had the balls to follow the abductors for a time, and saw them vanishing into the same parts of the underhive the beast of Solomon is claimed to inhabit. We go back up to the overhive, and contact the nobles who tasked our inquisitor and us, by proxy with this mission, and the cleric and arbitrator converse with them, saying how it would be far easier and expedient to solve this problem if they could help us get some local arbitrators as backup. Some good charm and blather rolls later, and several of the nobles reluctantly agree. Simultaneous to this, the rest of the party has entered the inquisitorial holdings in the hive, and after presenting their credentials and introducing themselves, explains how, if they could get some degree of backup, they can most likely make the local inquisitors look responsible for both ending the disappearances, resuming work levels in the underhive, and dispelling the beast of Solomon myth in one fell swoop. A 1 and a 2 are all during this, and lo and behold, some acolyte trainees are sent to get experience with us, and a few inquisitorial stormtroopers. Awesome. So, with allies everywhere, we proceed into the underhive, and start searching near the area the guy had led us to. Sure enough, we find a locked room with lots of noise behind it, and what Grendel identifies as cult symbols on it. It's go time. The inquisitorial stormtroopers blow the door off with charges and charge in, spraying bullets everywhere. We opt to let the arbitrators charge in next, and go in last with the trainees, imparting the greatest possible words of wisdom to them let other people take the bullets for you. Funny thing, as we charge in, we notice a great deal of brass and red colors. In fact, looking to near the back of the room, we see some weird lights and the sicker gets some feedback from Sinitians. We look at the grinning GM and realize he did it again we just made a bloodbath out of a cornet summoning ritual. Fuck. Double fuck. A goddamn bloodletter riding a juggernaut of corn pops in to say hi, and after about two thirds of our forces fail their willpower tests, charges us. What proceeds is a Scooby Doo chase sequence, with us running away from the beast, until the corridor branches. We all split and go different ways, because fuck this scares us. The demons charge after the two guardsmen, Dacker and Hack, and everyone tries to navigate the labyrinth. Grendel and Krom will make their way back to the cultist room first, and finds that the inquisitorial stormtroopers and the arbitrators had cleaned up, and all the cultists are dead. And it reeks of blood everywhere in that room. The four trainee acolytes with Grendel and Krom will gag at the smell, but one remarks at least this proves the beast of Solomon isn't real. Remember how the disappearances are different from the beast sacrifices, and how the abductions are recent whereas the beast is not? Guess what squeezes through the vents to say hi? 
yeah, beast of Solomon time. Q more Scooby Doo fleeing. So now pretty much everyone stormtroopers, arbitrators, acolytes and trainees are dashing around. Both trying to keep away from the demons and the beast for those who know it is here and trying to find each other. The beast decided to follow Grendel, because all that fat makes for a savory meal I guess, and so Grendel and company are running like hell to get away. Eventually they reach a broken bit of underhive where on one side there is no wall, just to drop the whole way to the surface, about a mile down, and just as we are about to flee out the other pathway, here comes the rest of the party and helpers, chased by the demons. Good times. So, we are trapped and terrified, when Grendel and Abel devise a plan. Abel tries to cast a modified psychic stench, one to make something smell highly desirable instead of repulsive, and succeeds in casting it, on Grendel. Grendel charges forward, trying to get in between the monsters, while everyone else tries to get into the tunnels. Both the beast and the demons charge Grendel, but there is a slight problem. Grendel is equidistant between them, and one awesome and trained dodge roll later, they have collided, with a bloodletter getting thrown onto the beast, who then tries to eat its new friend, and the juggernaut temporarily dazed. Grendel declares he is going to try and climb and ride the juggernaut. He is made to roll two difficult agility tests, one to climb it and one to mount it. He rolls a 9 and a 12. He then uses Grendel's claw to goad the juggernaut forward, and after making some awesome suggestive stabs, encourages it to charge, ramming some of its spikes into the beast. Still entangled with the blood litter, he tries to turn the juggernaut, and rolls a 2 on this attack, and gets the juggernaut. Beast of Solomon and blood litter pile to all be moving at ramming speed straight at the broken part of the wall. He attempts to leap off the pile of bodies, rolls a 87 and fails miserably, and spends his last fate point to try again. He fails by one point. Grendel leaps off the now plummeting pile of bodies, and burns a fate point, and manages to wrap a hand around an exposed piece of rebar, as behind him a juggernaut. A bloodletter and the beast of Solomon all plummet to their deaths. Fuck yeah. And, drum roll please, what has Grendel won for his badassery today? One new fate point, with that fresh point smell, 750 bonus experience, 4 doing the impossible, 5 permanent agility for his acrobatic prowess. Bringing the total to 32, he now is a fast fat guy. The sprint talent for running away so much. 1000 thrones from the nobles for doing so well at restoring work efficiency amongst their serfs. A batch of fanboys made of trainee acolytes, arbitrators and a few inquisitorial stormtroopers. Bonus info he had still not bought any sound constitutions or armor by this point. Recognizing the folly in this, he bought one whole wound and some mesh robes. AP3 all, TB2, 9 wounds. He is now unkillable. He also added a kill counter to his robe it has caricatures of a charnel demon, a juggernaut of corn and a blood litter on one side, and of the beast of Solomon on the other, which looks like a giant worm with teeth and scales. Amusing information. The GM has now forced Grendel to take forbidden law demons because he has been responsible for killing three different types all with Malleus Majoris threat ratings and rode the juggernaut off. Corn like it was his bitch. Grendel reluctantly agreed to actually learn something about the things he kills so easily. So I know for Dark Heresy the Saint no all guard party but it definitely fills the void in our hearts while we wait for the next part and who does not enjoy rooting for an underdog like Grendel. There is quite a few parts to this story so I will be working on this story this week. If you have enjoyed the story thus far you will definitely love where this story will be going. And of course you know the drill by this stage I am sure. Subscribe check out the discord and all the links down below and I'll see you with part 2 tomorrow. If you haven't already check out my Redbubble portfolio, you might just find something you like. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services. It's time to stop!